The generosity of the Lake Orion community was on full display this holiday season as children were paired up with first responders and members of the military for the Shop with a Hero program. Dozens of volunteers came together to sort and pack up food for families in need during the Lion Club's Christmas Basket program. Following a Christmas tree lighting ceremony, carolers strolled through the streets of downtown Lake Orion starting a brand new tradition and approximately 100 runners braved the cold weather to take part in the third annual Snow Dash on the Polyan Trail. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have these stories and more on this edition of ONTV News. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in downtown Lake Orion. The lights are strung on Broadway Street, but there was one thing that still needed to be done. On the evening of Thursday, December 12th, the Lake Orion community came together in Children's Park to enjoy a brand new holiday event hosted by the Lake Orion DDA. Families, carolers, and even Santa Claus himself gathered near the gazebo to enjoy some Christmas music. Dignitaries included 2019 Business Person of the Year Anthony Reard, Village Council President Ken Van Portfleet, and DDA Executive Director Molly Lalone. They led the crowd in a countdown to prompt Santa and Mrs. Claus to light the Christmas tree. Light uh, the tree. Five, four, Following the hometown holiday tree lighting ceremony, a large group of carolers made their way along Broadway Street for the first ever sing and stroll. Stopping at the popular shops and restaurants along the way, a cocoa bar was set up at Wine Social to warm up participants. The carolers traveled north along the east side of Broadway before crossing the street and hitting the businesses on the west side of the street, including Fork and Pint and Green Hippo Gifts. On the tenth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten floors of leaf and nine ladies sitting in eight ladies among the seven. Lake Orient's newest holiday tradition was made possible thanks to sponsors Genesis Credit Union, Broadway Embroidery, Neighborhood Primary Care, and Megan Spencer of Real Living John Burt Realty. The holiday season always seems to expose the generosity of this community. Recently, several events took place to ensure that children and families in need have a Merry Christmas. On the evening of Thursday, December 19th, the Target store on Braun Road in Auburn Hills was once again the setting for the annual Shop with a Hero event. Now in its 14th year, Shop with a Hero pairs up children with emergency personnel and members of the military for a shopping spree. A list is created from information provided by local schools. A child might be selected for a wide variety of reasons. We get a list of children in need and what we do is we then set them up with a hero and they get to go shopping so that they can have a Christmas. Okay, because some kids don't get to have a, a, a nice Christmas and so that's what we try to provide is, is a nice Christmas that maybe some young child may not have. Once a child is partnered up with a hero, they begin the evening enjoying pizza and pop. Then they head into the store to do some shopping. This year, approximately 75 kids were each given a gift card worth $125. Volunteers manned a gift wrapping station and kids were also able to pick up gifts for other members of their family. We get donations from businesses, everyday people. Um, we also have during the year, um, we will put on certain events. So really when it comes down, I think this year we also did a PayPal thing. Um, where again, everyday citizens, businesses, uh, they donate. And so this couldn't happen without these people. Acting Police Chief Harold Rossman also wanted to express his gratitude to the staff at Target for hosting this event every year. Target has been fantastic. Um, we, we owe them a, a, a gratitude that it's a mile wide. I mean, without them, it wouldn't be possible. Um, they, uh, they work hard, they've got extra staff on, 
they got to call ahead of time, get the toy section all staffed, you know, with toys uh, for this event. So Target has done huge. I mean, it's just so they, they're great. I don't know. I mean, and, and I owe them, you know, gratitude for all the help they've given us. The very next day, volunteers, young and old, gather together to help the Lake Orion Lions Club assemble food baskets and toys for families in need. On the morning of Friday, December 20th, dozens of volunteers unloaded trucks and sorted food in the Cirque building as the Lions Club prepared to deliver food and gifts to over 200 families and 90 senior citizens. The Christmas Basket Program is an annual event that brings the community together and ensures that families in need can put food on the table and presents under the tree this Christmas. Uh, it's such a great community event. We have a lot of fun with this every year. It's the Lions Club's probably our best event of the year for helping out the community. We will get, we have a list of over 200 families that need our help, need food and, and uh, gifts and everything to make a good Christmas for them. And the community just jumps in and, and helps like you wouldn't believe with donations and the can drives at the school. We had two huge, huge loads of, of cans and food from the high school this year. We thought we were done and then they called us back for another load just as big. Um, all the schools have helped out with gifts, uh, gift box donations, uh, donation boxes around the community have been full this year. Just an unbelievable year for the community helping us. The number of households that we're delivering to is at an all-time high. We'll deliver close to 300 households tomorrow. Um, and yeah, our, our volunteer help is up too. We kind of put the word out and the uh, Lake Orion High School uh, put the word out and their girls uh, varsity basketball team were here. Uh, several of their football players were here. Um, the ski team helped us unload Thursday uh, afternoon with a trailer full of canned goods. But yeah, volunteer help is up. We just use it as an opportunity to give back to the community. Um, our kids take part in the Lions Club Food Drive and so we make it a big competition within the school. Uh, and then we get the opportunity to help build boxes for uh, the food drive to help families have uh, great Christmases or holidays. A Christmas for Everyone fundraiser in early November allows the Lions Club to purchase perishable items such as meat, dairy, and fresh produce. Approximately two weeks of food, as well as toiletries and toys are then packed up and delivered to families and seniors on Saturday, just days before Christmas. We get a lot of the can drives through the schools and everything, so a lot of the food comes from that. But then the auction and our Goodfellow papers, if you saw us standing on the street a couple weeks ago, that money is all used to buy a lot more of the things that aren't donated, the, the sugar, bread, uh, the perishables. We give hams and, and gallons of milk and eggs and cheese and all the other stuff. So we, we go to Meyer and Kroger and shop for stuff there. We have a whole list two truckloads we bring in from there. And every year I look forward to this. All of the clubs in Michigan do this. Uh, nobody does it bigger than we do. 254 families here. Some wow. of those clubs have been, have been smaller ones, but we give away Christmas trees, we give away presents, we give away fresh food, canned foods. It's truly a community uh, project here though. I mean, the, the, the uh, Lions organize it, but all of the people participate. A lot of the people here today are not members of the Lions, but we've expanded over the last seven years to include family members, you know, sons and daughters, grandchildren. We also want to remind everyone that the Lions Club is currently selling their raffle calendars. For every calendar you purchase, you will be entered into a monthly raffle for a chance to win cash prizes throughout the year. For more information, visit LakeOrionLions.org. Earlier this month, one lo local church got into the giving spirit with an annual event. Parishioners at Christ the Redeemer Church on Saturday, December 7th, gathered for their annual day of giving and community service known as the St. Nicholas Project. Friends, neighbors, and families canvassed the Orient area collecting food and toiletries for the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. Donated toys and Christmas items were sorted and delivered to Lighthouse of Oakland County for families in need. Groups also volunteered at Gleaners, Habitat for Humanity, wrapped presents for our troops overseas, sang Christmas carols at local senior homes, plus much more. ONTV donated the use of our production van to help transport the hundreds of toys and food to Lighthouse of Oakland County. 
It truly was a great day of service and giving. <laughs> the St. Nicholas Project takes place annually the first Saturday in December. If you'd like more information about Christ the Redeemer Church and the St. Nicholas Project, or how you can help in the future, give them a call at 248-391-1621, extension 17, or drop an email at service at ctredeemer.org. While many of us gripe about the cold and the snow, others embrace everything winter has to offer. Recently, a group of runners decided to go for a leisurely run on the Pollyann Trail. On the morning of Sunday, December 15th, approximately 100 runners came out to the Orion Center for the start of the third annual Snow Dash 5K, with many of them dressed in festive gear. This year, the starting line was moved near the entrance of the Orion Center. At 9 a.m., the race was underway. We do this to get families together out in the parks, out on the trails, um, to be together, having fun, being healthy. Who are these people that come out on a cold Sunday, December morning and take part in these 5Ks? Well, they are a little bit crazy because it is a little cold out here, but um, actually it's beautiful to run in the cold weather. You don't get as hot, you don't get overheated. It's, it's a, actually, it's a very nice day to be out for a run. Race time temperature was 28 degrees with a light snow. The course took participants on the scenic Pollyann Trail before circling back to the finish line at the Orion Center. Yes, I did modify the course a little bit. Um, for safety reasons and icy conditions, we decided to stay off of Green Shield. We are not looping around Township Hall. Uh -huh. We're just going down the trail, uh, crossing over um, Scripps, crossing over Green Shield, turning around and coming back. So it's all trail. The first runner to cross the finish line was 13-year-old Jack Bowman of Oxford, who finished with a time of 20:33. Um, I just love the run. It's super fun for me. I love just um, pushing myself. And um, winter snow dash is an amazing race. I love to do it every year. I've been doing it for three years. What was your reaction when you found out that you were the first one to cross the finish? Um, I was super excited because I I was trying to win this year. I didn't know if any yeah I didn't know if I was going to get. I was trying to at least get first in my age group. The first female to finish was 13-year-old Megan Fox of Lake Orion. Megan finished fourth overall with a time of 21.55. All participants received a medal at the finish line. An entry fee helped cover the costs of the race. As the year winds down, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce managed to squeeze in one last ribbon-cutting ceremony to welcome a brand new business to the community. On Thursday, December 12th, representatives of the Orion Chamber gathered at Legacy 925 in Oxford to celebrate the official grand opening of Freedom Kitchen, a restaurant that offers healthy meals for those on the go. Okay, go for it. <laughs> oh, the Orion Chamber's been fantastic. From the first time that I met Noelle and Kim, I mean, I've just been so blessed. And the turnout that we had is really indicative of how awesome this whole community has been, welcoming us. Um, Oxford and Orion. We just love it out here. Um, I will say that I always told my husband I wanted to retire out here. So um, I got a leg up now as long as we stay in business. When he retires from Macomb Community College in seven years, we'll be moving out here, providing Freedom Kitchen does well. <laughs> Formerly Fuel Your Life Cafe, Lisa Genza and Dr. Keith Brennan took over the space at Legacy 925 to offer healthy meals to those who choose to dine in or grab something to go. They also offer cooking classes for people of all ages looking to improve their eating habits. So we were looking for a place where we could either do prepared meals for people, um, busy people on the go, or package some of our products and offer them wholesale in other locations. So uh, we were looking for a commercial kitchen when we stumbled upon uh, this location. It was Fuel Your Life Cafe and it was for sale. So it's a commercial kitchen that also has the benefit of being a cooking school um, and then also the added benefit of being a restaurant. So we weren't really looking to open a restaurant, although um, Dr. Keith said it always would be exciting and a dream of his to own a restaurant. Um, we were looking to have healthy fast food available for people and a place where they could continue to learn so we can teach them how to make healthy choices in their own life. A lot of people don't realize that nutrition is a huge part of a chiropractor's education. Um, unlike the uh, medical doctors have all the pharmaceutical classes, so they're bared down by that. So that got me into nutrition and got me starting to eat differently. And 
Plus, I've liked to eat since I was about five or six years old. Even though I might not look like it, I can out eat um, on average two men on the daily calories I take a day. So I had to figure out a way that they could be healthy. And that's kind of uh, how me and Lisa brainstormed to put the menu together here at Freedom Kitchen. Freedom Kitchen is located at 925 North Lapeer Road in Suite 123. For more information, visit their website at freedomkitchen.net. You can also find them on Facebook at Freedom Kitchen Oxford. And finally, we here at ONTV were saddened to learn about the passing of former library director Linda Sickles on Sunday, December 15th at the age of 72. Linda began working at the Orion Township Public Library in 1980 when it was still housed in this building on M24 that is now occupied by Northern Flooring and Interiors. She oversaw the opening of the new library in February of 1989 at its current location on Jocelyn Road, just north of Clarkston. She faced the challenges of trying to keep the library relevant in an era when people have constant access to information at their fingertips. She retired in January of 2012 after serving 31 years as the library's director. Karen Knox stepped in as the library's director in February of 2012. It's just been um, a wonderful career. Um, I think that I have spent almost half of my life in this position and uh, it's been very rewarding and challenging at times, but um, I think it's just been a delight to serve this community. And I thank them for the support they have given the library and me um, to be able to do what we do. A memorial service was held on Friday, December 20th at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Rochester. Our condolences go out to Linda's family and friends. She will be greatly missed by those who had the pleasure of knowing her. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Happy holidays and happy new year to everyone watching. Good night. <laughs>